On the world now, we begin with Russia's war on Ukraine, which enters its 488th day. Now, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu has visited troops in Ukraine, his first public appearance since the weekend mutiny by the Wagner Group. This comes as the European Union foreign minister said the aborted Wagner mutiny is causing domestic instability in Russia and undermining its military power. We have details in this report. Russia's defense minister, Sergei Shogu, is shown on state TV visiting troops fighting in Ukraine in the first appearance since Wagner mercenaries mutinied over the weekend. The defense minister was seen inspecting troops, but there is no indication where or when the footage was taken. A lot happened over the weekend in Russia. On Friday, Wagner mercenary group leader Yevgeny Prigozhin accused Russian defense officials of bombing Wagner troops in Ukraine. He also had demanded Russian defense minister's removal, describing him as evil. On Saturday morning, things came to a head when Prigozhin announced that his troops, a private army of mercenaries fighting for Russia in Ukraine, would march for justice against the military leadership. They crossed the border from Ukraine into Russia, entering the southern city of Rostov and Don. Later that same day, Things took another turn, with Prigozhin calling off the rebellion. Wagner troops pulled out of Rostovodon, where they had seized the military headquarters. In a swift reaction, the United States described the mutiny as a direct challenge to Russian President Vladimir Putin, thereby revealing cracks in his leadership. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg says they aborted the mutiny by Wagner troops over the weekend is yet another demonstration of the big strategic mistake Vladimir Putin made by invading Ukraine. Mr. Stoltenberg, who heads up the military alliance of 31 countries, including the UK and US, describes the event over the weekend as an internal Russian matter. We are monitoring the situation in Russia. The events over the weekend are an internal Russian matter. And yet another demonstration of the big strategic mistake uh, that President Putin made uh, with his legal, uh, annexation, uh, or his legal annexation of Crimea and the war against uh, Ukraine. As Russia continues its assault, it is even more important to continue our support to Ukraine. Ukrainians have launched a counteroffensive to retake occupied land. And the more land they are able to liberate, and stronger, the stronger the hand will eventually be at the negotiating table. The EU's foreign policy chief, Joseph Borrell, says the Wagner Group's aborted mutiny shows cracks in Russia's military power. He says the political system is showing fragilities and the military power is cracking. Yeah, this is, uh... He spoke with reporters in Luxembourg ahead of a meeting of EU foreign ministers. What has happened? during this weekend shows that uh, the win against Ukraine is cracking Russian power and affecting its political system. We are certainly following closely what's happening, but uh, it's now the moment to continue supporting Ukraine more than ever. Meanwhile, the rubble has fallen to 15 months low as financial markets begin to respond to the weekend's short-lived rebellion. The Kremlin says it would drop criminal charges against Yevgeny Prigozhin, who had been accused of treason, while Mr. Prigozhin agreed to leave Russia for Belarus, though his whereabouts are currently unknown. Well, let's return to the happenings in uh, Ukraine, which is in its 40th day. That's Russia's war on that country. And joining us for more is Global Affairs Analyst Amoda Musibodi. He joined us to discuss the weekend rebellion by the Wagner soldiers. Thank you for joining us on the world now. Let's talk about the event of the weekend. Well, did you see it coming or was it a case of how soon? I mean, when would it happen? Uh, well, um, anyone who is familiar with the activities and the dangers inherent in the use of private military corps uh, would understand that it was just um, a danger in Britain. Um, in fact, uh, um, over the weekend, I was just referring to two seminal um, books 
uh, won by Sean Marquette, who was um, who is also a retired um, a military general in the U.S., who talked about you know um, the book titled uh, Modern Missionary, and another one by P.W. Singer titled The Corporate um, you know uh, The Corporate Warriors. Uh, these two books talk about the dangers inherent in you know having to outsource war to uh, missionaries, as, as we call them. And then, you know, you, you know that these people are fighting for financial interest. And as long as that interest does not align with the interest of the state, and now you, what you're doing in essence is you're bringing in non-state actors to act as agents for the state. Now, there is going to be a point, or there will get to a point, where the interest of the state and the interest of this non-state actors will definitely run into, uh, you know, collision. I will have reactions as this. So, you know, something that a lot of us were actually expecting will come. So when it happened, it didn't come as a surprise in any sense. Mm, all right. And as it is now, the U.S. and European Union appear to share the same sentiment that the incident is uh, showing cracks in Vladimir Putin's administration and of course that it's undermining its military power. Do you share the same sentiment? Um, first, I, I think it's a case of, you know, the pot calling the kettle black. Even the U.S. itself uses a uh, private military call. Um, I just mentioned, uh, you know, the experience, life experience of uh, someone like uh, the Dr. Sean Maxwell, um in Liberia and Afghanistan where the U.S. actually has to use, you know, these uh, modern machineries. Now, what does this say about the Putin administration? Now, definitely, I will also agree to an extent with them that it, it you know, definitely shows that there's a crack. Now, it has shown a Putin to the world that, A, the center is not actually holding as it were. Don't forget that the, you know, the one that group that we're talking about is a brainchild of Putin himself. And now there is a crack from within. Uh, his closest ally is turning or has turned against him, and you know you can only imagine. Now, it's also important to say this: that the invasion was done in such a way that there was no reaction from the military in you know the domain. Now, one would have expected exchange of you know gunfire, but that was not done. So it tells me that there are some persons in the army who are not loyal to Putin um, as he should be. And so there will be a, a need for total um, in-house um, cleansing. And definitely, um, if they're going to go ahead with the war against Ukraine, uh, mm. one would expect that Putin and Russia would definitely do that. And as a form of soft landing, the leader of the Wagner Group has now uh, made his way to Belarus, although uh, his current location is actually not known. Just how much more instability are we likely to experience as a result of this move? Um, I, I think as, as a show of force, don't forget as they often say that the state has a monopoly of force. As a show of force, uh, Putin would not let it slide. Um, and of course, uh, previously he understands this too. So the old negotiation broken by the president of Belarus, nonetheless, uh, Putin will find a way to get even. Uh, now, how will this, uh, you know, play out? One cannot tell, uh, but then there will be some, you know, skirmishes that will follow through from this. It also gives room because uh, the ones that are not the only uh, private military corps that is being used in the prosecution of the, uh, you know, Ukraine-Russian war, there are also other private military corps that are also used. So one would expect that uh, there will be a need to tighten all loose ends and. Um, Within the rank and file of the army, too, there may be um, some uproar because there were allegations from Pegasus against some senior military teams, and uh, there will be a need to look into all of this, and this will cause uh, definitely to cause some, some stir. Maybe some air some to have to roll, maybe some air to have to stay there, but then we can always expect that there will be reaction. Oh, isn't it? 488 day, and Definitely, those who are bearing the brunt of this would want it to end as soon as possible. How soon that would be, the world waits to see. Global Affairs Analyst Amodamo Sibudi, thank you for talking to us on The World Now.